Let's look at selection refinement in Affinity Photo. Selection refinement is incredibly useful for when it comes to cutting out subjects from their backgrounds whilst maintaining all of the fine detail. So for example, in this image we have the wolf and we have all of the fur around the outline of its head here and then we have some whiskers as well. Okay, so selection refinement is going to enable us to keep all of these little fine details when we remove the background from this image. So, first we need to create a basic selection and to do that we can use the selection brush tool here. Then I'll just use the right bracket key on my keyboard to increase the brush width. Then we just need to click drag into the areas we wish to select, like so. And there's our basic selection. Now we need to refine it. So to do that, we go up to the context toolbar here and choose refine. This will perform an initial analysis of the selection we've just given to it and give us a rough matted result. But it's not good enough for our purposes, so we need to refine it further. So to do that, we already have on here the matte adjustment brush selected, which is what we're going to be using. So again, I'll use the right bracket key on my keyboard to increase the brush width. Then what I want to do is click drag over these areas that I want to refine. So it's basically the outline of the wolf where we can see the background bleeding through. And we're just going to make sure we capture all of those hairs and whiskers. Then I release the mouse button and it performs the refinement. So now we'll see we have a much more accurate result. We are going to tidy it up but first I'll introduce you to the different preview modes. So we have overlay which marks the background with a red overlay. We also have black matte and white matte. So these are good for previewing what our cutout will look like on black or white background fills. Then we have black and white. We're going to come back to this in a minute. And then we have transparent which basically makes the background pure alpha. So I'm going to move to black and white and this will give us a clearer idea of how accurate our cutout or selection is actually going to be. For example, over here, you can see we've got some background spilling through in this area. So to tackle this, what we need to do is change our adjustment brush to mark as background. Then I'll just use the left bracket key to reduce my brush width and I'm just going to click into this area here just to tell Affinity Photo that actually this area wants to be the background. So when I release the mouse button, it will now take another look at that area with that instruction. And up here we have the opposite problem. We're letting too much of the background bleed through onto our subject. So we can do the opposite, we can mark as foreground. Let's change to the foreground brush and I'm just going to click drag into this area. You can see it's filling with a nice solid white. Then I'll release the mouse button. So again, we're just instructing Affinity Photo to take another look at that area, but we're also clarifying exactly what should be a foreground and what should be in the background. Okay, so once that's finished, we'll have a nice accurate selection there. And let's just move down to the nostril area. So again, I'll just mark this as foreground. Uh, let's go along the length of the nose. Okay, and then once I'm finished, release the mouse button. You don't need to go right to the edge of your subject. See here, I've left some detail, but that is enough to instruct Affinity Photo to fill in the area that we need as part of our subject. So again, just down here, notice I'm not going right to the edge. I'm just adding a bit more of a solid foreground and that will fill out to the edges quite nicely. Okay, so I am happy with that. But before we move on, I just want to cover some of these additional options on the Refine Selection dialog here. So we have border width. And basically what this does is it increases the tolerance for matte sampling. So a wider border width might increase accuracy with finer detail, but you might also get areas that are incorrectly identified as background or foreground detail. 
And next we have smooth. So this smooths the refined selection. It's useful if you need a smoother overall selection or if you're working with a poor quality image where noise or artifacting might be identified as fine detail. But for this image, I don't need any smoothing. So I'm going to reduce that to zero. And then we have feather. So feather is much like when we feather a regular selection. It will smooth, but also round the selection detail. Again, I don't need it for this image, so I'm going to bring it back to zero. And then finally, we have ramp. And this adjusts the overall matte spill. So if we bring it to 100%, this will slacken the tolerance, as we can see, for the matte refinement. And you'll get a lot of additional matte spill onto the background. If we reduce it to minus 100%, that will tighten it up significantly. So you might want to experiment to find a good balance. But for now, I'm just going to leave this at 0%. Okay, so then we need to choose what to do with our refined selection. Here we have output. Okay, so we can output it straight to our refined selection. Additionally, we can output it to a mask or a new layer or new layer with mask. I'm going to just choose selection so that I can show you the masking procedure separately. When we click apply, we now get our nice refined selection and I'm going to mask it. So I'll move across to the layers panel here and I have my pixel layer selected all I need to do is choose mask layer here and it adds a mask based off that selection. So now I can choose select and deselect to get rid of the marquee selection. And just to round off this image, let's add a white background fill. So to do this, I'll go to layer, new fill layer. Then I just drag the fill layer underneath my pixel layer. And there we go. We have our nice refined cutout.